A commenter recently posted, if you need dual fuel in your heat pump, it's junk. And in this video, we are going to debunk why that couldn't be further from the truth. We put out a lot of content on dual fuel heat pumps on this channel because for moderate to colder climates, it's a great option for a few reasons that we'll cover in this video. And we'll also respond to another subscriber's comment because it's a common scenario we run into and contains a common question that we get asked often. And if you're tuning in for the first time and aren't familiar with what dual fuel heat pump technology is. At the end of this video, there'll be a link to another video that talks about dual fuel heat pumps and explains the concepts in more detail. But first, let's debunk this dual fuel heat pump hater and set the record straight. And the comment reads as follows. Solex8588 posted, if you need dual fuel in your heat pump, it's junk. Cold climate heat pumps cover 100% of heating and cooling without the need for backup. R290 air to water monoblock heat pumps still function down to negative 35 degrees Celsius. So first off, Solex8588, thank you for taking the time to comment, and I want to start off by saying I partially agree with you, but we're not actually talking about apples to apples. The heat pump you're referencing is an air to water heat pump, not an air source air to air heat pump. And the heat pump you're referencing uses R290, which is not currently used in the United States, or it's at least not used on a widespread basis for most systems. Now, for those of you that are watching, I want to take a minute to talk about this technology because R290 is what is what's called a natural refrigerant because it's not an HCFC or hydrochlorofluorocarbon like R410A or R454B, for example. R290 is actually just propane. And one of the nice things about propane from a refrigerant standpoint is that it is, number one, widely available. Two, very cheap by comparison with other refrigerants. And three, it's not likely to be phased out because the GWP is very low. Now, GWP is an acronym that stands for Global Warming Potential and is a rating that is given to HCFCs and all refrigerants. For example, the rating for 410A is over 2,000, which means that one pound of refrigerant is equivalent to 2,000 pounds of CO2 in the atmosphere. To be quite frank, I don't know how much of this I actually believe, but the bottom line is that these rating scales will affect what refrigerants are in the market and what can be used to heat and cool your home. And therefore, it's important to stay up to date on how these work. Now, you might be thinking, well, why don't we just use propane as a refrigerant if it has such a low GWP. The one problem is something that you might have already thought of, and that is that it is highly flammable. This does introduce a slight level of danger from a working environment perspective, but the units themselves are safe, and there's nothing dangerous about having propane lines running through your home, because at least in North America and most of the world, we all have natural gas and propane lines in homes, so this is nothing new. But the bottom line is that R290 monoblock air-to-water heat pumps are actually a viable technology, but they are not really widely used or available in the United States on a residential basis. However, this may be something that can be adopted, especially to replace boiler systems as people start looking for electric or heat pump boiler replacement options in the future. But assuming this comment had been referencing air source heat pumps and not referencing air to water heat pumps, there's a few more reasons that this comment is incorrect, which we will touch on now. Now, the reason that we have dual fuel heat pumps and a heat pump is because oftentimes heat pumps will not be able to carry the entire load of a house in cold climates because of an issue related to either ductwork sizing, sizing for the heat load, as well as sizing for the cooling load. Now there's another video we put out that explains how heat pumps work and what they are, but essentially an air source heat pump is just an air conditioner with a reversing valve. And the reason this is relevant is because the airflow that goes across your coil for your air conditioner and through your ductwork for your air conditioner will also be the same airflow that goes across your heat pump in heating mode. The reason this is a problem is because the heat load for your house might not be the same as the cooling load for your house, and I'll explain how this works in the following example. The truth is that the heat load and cooling load are rarely identical. When we perform a system replacement on a house and we perform a heat load calculation, we are determining what size air conditioner we need, as well as what the heating demands will be on the house, because based on a specific external design temperature, that's going to fluctuate, and the loads on the space will vary depending on how hot or how cold it gets outside. For example, I have run heat load calculations with a 100 degree design temperature, and if I take that exact same home and size a system for a 115 degree design temperature, a house that could have worked with a five ton air conditioner suddenly would require seven or eight tons of 
of cooling to keep up with 115 degrees outside demand temperature, depending on the indoor design temperature conditions, which are typically set somewhere between 70 and 74 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on the region. In Denver, Colorado and Phoenix, Arizona, when we are running heat load calculations, for example, these two loads never match up. For example, your average thousand square foot home in Colorado will require only a two ton air conditioner typically, but the heating load is typically somewhere around 40 or 50,000 BTUs. This means if we were to install a heat pump big enough to carry the entire demand, you would have a four ton heat pump in order to carry the load on the coldest nights. But there's two problems with this. First, I can almost guarantee the ductwork is not big enough to handle this amount of airflow. And two, even if it was big enough, now you have a four ton air conditioner on a house that only needs two tons of cooling, which means that the system is going to be way oversized for the house and short cycle in cooling season, especially if it's a single stage system. Now, technically you could stage a two stage system, but it's still not the most efficient way to go about things. But as I mentioned earlier, as technologies like this start to come to the USA, meaning the air to water heat pumps that were referenced in the comment, the design considerations will start to change and evolve. But for most air source heat pumps, this does not apply. The reason that dual fuel heat pumps are not junk and make a lot of sense is because of the scenario I just described. We could put in a 60,000 BTU, 80% efficient furnace as a backup heat source for a two ton heat pump. And in this example, that two ton heat pump will keep up with the heating load the majority of the time in Denver. And on really cold nights when it drops below 10 or zero degrees Fahrenheit, it will not be a problem because the backup furnace will kick in to pick up the slack. That is the purpose of a dual fuel heat pump with a modern forced air infrastructure that's available in most existing homes in the United States. And on that note, we're going to talk about another comment that was posted on that same video from a different commenter that had a common question and common scenario that we're going to address here shortly and give them some advice and our opinion on some options that are available for their specific situation. But before we do that, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's a great way you can show support for the channel and it really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm so that we can keep putting out content like this and it is much appreciated. And please smash that like button if you haven't done so already, if you're enjoying this video. And on the same note, before I read this comment, if you have a specific situation that you have questions about and would like us to put out a video, please post in the comment section below because we do read all of the comments and use that information to create content that is relevant to you and answers your questions. So that being said, let's take a look at this next comment now. BST Mafia said, this is the first real information I'm coming across after getting three different quotes last year that were all completely different recommended systems ranging from 35K up to 60K. And I'm assuming that is referencing price. I knew nothing then, so we decided to wait since the prices were coming in so high, but we are getting ready to get another three quotes soon because our current Sears furnace with baseboard heating is running on borrowed time. We just bought the house this year and plan on living here a long time as it has solar panels, which I need to find out more information on because we don't own it, unfortunately. We definitely want ducted airflow and know that will bring the price up a lot. It's a two-story house in Boston, Massachusetts. The attic hatch is very small to get a unit up in there, but we could totally widen it up. I'm just now learning about going all electric and getting hyped for it, but realistically, I need to do a ton more research to get the right setup and more similar quotes. Thank you guys for the video and comments. Any recommendations would be greatly appreciated with my research journey. So first off, thanks for taking the time to post that quote and let's break it down really quick. So first off, they've decided they are looking for a ducted system option. As you know, or may be aware, there are many split options available, which are the head units that are on the wall, but it sounds like this subscriber does not want a mini split unit. They want a ducted system. Now they have a tight attic and they also have a small access, which they already agreed could be widened. And I agree that's not that big of a deal. So what I want to do is give them a few options that I think will work great for their scenario because we run into this type of situation a lot. Now the first thing you can consider would be something to replace your Sears furnace, which it sounds like what you're describing is actually a boiler, not a furnace, because you said you have baseboard heat. If you have baseboard hydronic heat in your home and you already have a hydronic system, you could actually get an R290 monoblock heat pump like the one referenced earlier because that's an air to water heat heat pump that could heat your water up to 75 degrees Celsius, which is about how hot you need baseboards to get in order to heat effectively. Now this would allow you to get your desired heat pump and go electric and tap into the existing solar panel infrastructure that you have on your roof, even though it sounds like it's a leased system, not an own system. And this would then only require you to get a ducted heat pump system for the attic for the purposes of cooling and heating the upstairs.
stairs. Now the caveat I mentioned earlier is that this is probably going to be difficult to find this air to water heat pump in the United States, but this technology will be coming here soon. If it's not already, it will just take a little bit more digging. And because of this post, I'm actually going to look into it a little bit more because I'm legitimately curious about offering these as a product to our existing customers that have boilers and want to get off of natural gas. The last time I inquired about this type of technology was regarding a product that Daikin Mates called the Althermo uh, and my vendor said they're really only available in Europe currently, and so I was kind of SOL at the moment. So assuming you're unable to do this, because I haven't been able to do it, and you're wanting to go with a ducted system, there is a couple of types of ducted systems that I want to talk about. Now, the first would be a traditional air handler, which it sounds like you've already had a few proposals for this. Depending on the size of the attic, it may or may not be difficult to squeeze an air handler in there, even with a bigger attic access. If it's a very tight attic, that can be difficult. And if that's the case, a second option to consider would be what's called a slim ducted unit. Now, both of these systems can be paired with an inverter condenser outside, which is going to be your actual heat pump. And an inverter system like the Daikin Fit heat pump can pair with an air handler. Or if you go for a slim ducted unit, Daikin also has a product called Sky Air, which I'll link in the description for your reference. And other manufacturers like Mitsubishi also have these slim duct air handler units as well as an option, but they work great for tight space spaces because they typically are only 10 to 12 inches high and when you need to squeeze in a few ducts into a tight space this can be a great solution. Now my ultimate recommendation is going to vary based on whether it's a two-story house plus a basement or if it's a two-story house built on slab or built with a crawl space. Since my understanding is that a lot of homes in Boston have basements I will assume it has a basement and has two stories above ground so I can paint a scenario of how you could potentially run a completely ducted system. Now one of the easiest ways to handle that what this person is looking for would be with a system like VRV Life because the condenser outside can actually be connected to multiple ducted air handlers in the system. There could be one in the basement that handles all of the duct work supplying the main floor and that same condenser could then be paired with a second air handler or a slim duct unit that's in the attic upstairs. Also VRV Life provides very reliable heating in cold weather all the way down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit and in Boston this rarely happens if you look at historic weather over the past 10 years there was only one year that I saw at a glance where it got down to negative 9 degrees Fahrenheit and most years the coldest temperatures were single digit low temps so that being said I would check with a local Daikin dealer in the Boston area that has familiarity with some of the systems I mentioned just to get a baseline quote a few different heat pump scenarios and your scenario but in your situation a heat pump sounds like a great option. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service, like Denver, Colorado, or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. That's right, we come out for free for all first-time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service, so you can stay up-to-date when we start servicing your metro. And as promised earlier, there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now now that you can check out about dual fuel heat pumps if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for tuning in and we will catch you on the next episode.